welcome back. Right now, some important California issues are being brought up in Washington, from oil train safety to the future of water use here in California. And we are joined now by Congressman John Garamendi. Congressman Garamendi, welcome. Thank Delighted you. to be with you. Thank you for joining us Thank this you. Sunday. And you've been pushing for stricter safety standards for hazardous materials by rail. If you could tell us a little bit about what you've sure. been working on recently. Well, we're now going to see unit trains, 100 car, tank cars filled with Balkan oil coming into California down through Roseville, Sacramento, West Sacramento, Davis, all the way down to uh, Sassoon and on to uh, Benicia. They'll be carrying very volatile, very, very explosive crude oil. Now the uh, Department of Transportation just issued a set of regulations to improve the tank cars, uh, to improve rail safety, but they didn't address what I think is a critical issue, which is the volatility, the explosiveness of this crude oil. It has uh, methane, butane, propane, all of these very, very explosive gases in it. So get it out. Strip that out before you put the oil in it and before you send it to California. And this is H.R. 1679, which is called the Bakken Crude Stabilization exactly. Act. Exactly. And what is the act actually asking for? Well, it basically tells the oil companies and the rail companies, before you put that Balkan crude or any crude oil on a train, take out the volatile gases, the methane, propane, butane, take them out. It can be done. And those are valuable. And they can be, uh, then you can ship with a higher degree of safety. Not that there's going to be perfectly safe because you still have a lot of crude oil. And what kind of people are, are this, is this affecting? How many people is this affecting? Well, let's talk about uh, Marysville, my district, uh, Roseville, Sacramento, West Sacramento, Davis, um, Dixon, and Sassoon City, and then down to Benicia. And some of those trains will also go into the Bay Area through Richmond. So basically, it's all this part of Northern California and some parts of Southern California also. And there are other cities before you even get to California. Okay. And moving to our state's water concerns, the governor introduced right. his new version of the Delta Tunnels plan on Thursday. Let's take a quick listen here to some of what he had to say. We're grappling with a problem, and people have different interests for wanting to say no. We have no choice but to engineer our waterworks. We're doing a hell of a lot, and that, uh, uh, that is to be applauded. What was your reaction to hearing this new part of this plan? It's still the same. A very, very expensive uh, project that can destroy the Delta. Those tunnels are big enough to take all the water out of the Sacramento River and literally destroy the largest estuary on the west coast of the Western Hemisphere. And you don't need to do it. It's a terrible waste of money. For $15 billion, you could build Sites Reservoir, adding 1.8 million acre feet of water to the system. And in this drought year, it would have provided 900,000 acre feet of water. You can do the conservation, both urban and agriculture. And you can also build a small facility along the western side of the Delta, stay out of some very prime agricultural lands, historic communities. You don't need to do this. For that amount of money, you can do all of that, and you can also get a million acre feet of water in Southern California by recycling water from the fifth biggest river on the west coast of the Western Hemisphere. The sanitation plants in Southern California. The water is there. The storage systems are already in place in Southern California. Why you would waste 15 billion dollars? That's the starting bid. How much does this cost? Usually you get to double those numbers. Why would you waste money on something that doesn't create one gallon of new water, but does set up a mechanism to steal water from the south and deliver it, steal water from the north and deliver it to the south? And this new plan also addressed the wetlands in the area. Do you have an opinion on that and how revitalization of them? Well, you know, this is one of the great hoaxes about this whole process. Uh, the plan, the uh, Bay Habitat Conservation Plan was supposed to be over 100,000 acres and it was going to be paid for by the water users. Now it's less than 30,000 acres. Much of it has nothing to do with fish and it's going to be paid for by the general public. Uh, this is a great scam and it is not going to protect the environment. In fact, it puts the Delta at risk in San Francisco Bay. Now keep in mind, this estuarian system is absolutely critical for fish, salmon, other species of fish, for the health of San Francisco Bay, and the governor seems to be abandoning all hope of protecting it. The state law says you have two goals in the Delta. One, water delivery and what's water security, and two, the health and maintenance of San Francisco Bay and Delta. The governor has abandoned the second part of those 
twin goals and simply forging ahead, digging two tunnels that don't create a gallon of water at an initial cost of $15 billion. And what do you get? You get an existential threat to the Delta because this year in this drought, the Sacramento River is flowing at less than 9,000 cubic feet per second and that can be all the water going into the tunnels and none of it into the Delta for the habitat and for the agriculture and the economy of the Delta. Well, Congressman, we do want to thank you for joining us this My Sunday. Pleasure. And Ryan, we're going to send it back over to you. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Congressman.